So hello everyone and welcome to a little bit of a more special sort of episodes. So here is a Kickstarter project that is in Kickstarter at this very moment. And I would say that you could go and have a look at it if you happen to be at all interested. I'm gonna be leaving uh, into the descriptions a uh, link to this page. They have a prototype of the game also that you can be downloading from their page easily here in the Kickstarter. So indeed, if you have any interest in uh, turn-based uh, role-playing games, do give it a look. This prototype showcases a little bit of a different sides of uh, Saharia. Um, even if there's a lot of points still missing like a stealth system and then there are, uh, for example, magic that is not used in the prototype at all, which is understandable. I'm going to be playing this prototype now for myself and for you guys as well. Soon enough, here's a link as well to the point where I start to play if you do not want to be listening more of my ramblings. <laughs> but yeah, as said, do have a look if you're interested at all. But to me, at least, this looked like a very interesting looking game, and I would hope that they would get a little bit more uh, pledges to reach their goal, so that this game would be made, or made at least more easily. I hope they wouldn't give up, even if this goal doesn't meet up, because, the, well, they left 16, but I hope that this way they might also find a few more packers. But indeed, I was very interested, at least, in this game. I think it has a lot of potential, and in all honesty, I've always wanted a game where a role-playing game that would be in some kind of a desert environment. There really isn't any, at least that come really into my mind very well. Uh, the only thing that comes into my mind is Diablo 2's desert area, and that really wasn't, well, it's an action role-playing game, but I don't really count it. But yeah, yeah, I think it has a lot of potential. I'm interested in seeing where it would lead us, and I hope you would too. You can look into the updates as well, what they have told about the full game at this point. They have a few concept art here too. But I am going to be playing now then after this, the actual prototype. So I think that it will be an interesting experience, and I hope you will enjoy the journey with me. So, let us get into it then. So, here we are in Zaharia. So, this is of course the standalone prototype of Zaharia. But, as said, I think there's a lot of promise. I do like the art style and the music seems very nice too. So, let us start a new game and see what it is all about. And let's start a new my previous progress, uh, well, my fraps didn't want to be working, so it is unfortunately not going to be here. But on the other hand, at least we, I know a little bit more about what all is in here. So here's uh, action points, then there's the stamina, a defense, and the health points. I will be a female, and as I am from the northern lands anyways, let's be a northern, northerner. So let us choose her. What will we have? Well, I think I'm gonna have a lot of dexterity. This is quite interesting as well that uh, we have different kind of things here unlocked. Quick reflexes unlocked because we have high enough for dexterity. Rapid attack unlocked in uh, this 10. So I think we might have the 10 maybe. In the dexterity, I do know that I want to have a very high intuition though. And uh, let's have at least some more intelligence, maybe some more charisma. Mm. Yeah, I'm not gonna be the most charismatic, but I will have a lot of intuition. Intuition uh, represents wit, wisdom, and common sense and critical spirit. It makes the character look beyond the facade and think in an unconventional way. A higher intuition value gives the possibility to obtain a bonus in many activities, unlocks many dialogue lines, offering alternative ways to solve a problem. And willpower, of course, because of the magic, is not in this uh, prototype. It's not active now, but it would be in the future. So we are just going to be Gide for this uh, playthrough. 
but I do know what kind of a character I'm gonna be wanting to make. Intelligence rep represents mental facilities. A higher intelligence value increases character's ability points and makes learning easier and faster. Then there's of course charisma, constitution, dexterity, and strength. Pretty usual stuff mostly. Let's go, next step. Then here's a lot of different abilities. I do like these uh, different knowledge abilities, which of course are not now available, but for the future, definitely. There's quite a lot of available points though, <laughs> and so it's hard to decide what exactly I would want to do here. I think I could add a few points to athletic at least. Not a lot. I am going to be an expert postman. Definitely. Aim shot, and then let's have a uh, crippling shot as well. What about, I already know that 50 is the maximum at least that we can have. Maybe we could just add this to 50, and just be very good with this, and not add anything else to anything else in here in the weapons. It could work, possibly. We're not intimidating. I guess we could really be maybe putting more points into speed scrap. Maybe. We're not really... We don't really have that much actually in the... Specifically in the speech craft. Maybe we should be more uh, deceiving, I mean. Mm hmm. I wonder... What exactly would I wanna have? Uh, well, I know I'm not gonna be that intimidating at least. Deceive... Speedscraft. Let's add a few more points into Speedscraft. Okay, yeah. Let's roll with this kind of a character. Then there we have a portrait of ours, of course, with two different weapons that we can choose. I'm gonna be choosing a longbow. Uh, the longbow is a larger bow with the long range capabilities. Our secondary weapon is then going to be a scimitar, I would say. Yeah. And there's different weapon styles with it. I think we're gonna be just going with the small shield. And leather armor definitely for our character. But <laughs> it's interesting to see these other kind of armors too. Here's the different perks that we happen to have. As well. Hmm. Well. I guess that's all good. Pretty much. Yes. Start the game. Loading. This is a nice screen. So you took part in an expedition to the south of Saharia, in the very heart of the Great Desert, in search of Kahandar, a mythical city buried under the dunes. The expedition was funded by Soren R. Izar, a Saharian wealthy merchant, who at last decided to lead it personally. The fascination that this mute exercise over the centuries led lots of men to this place, whose location is still unknown, many failed their research. But this did not discourage Shoran and his followers. The expedition visited several sites in ruins, searching for clues that would enable them to locate Gahandar. But during the night, the group was attacked by a full clan of nomads. Taken by surprise, the soldiers Soran recruited were not able to repel the enemy. During the assault, a straight arrow killed Soran. However, the nomad's leader too fell in battle and it opened the door to the beginning of a civil war within the clan. The nomads started to fight against each other, so ignoring the few survivors of the expedition. You and a few others have been able to escape and camp out a few hours while from the battle. Now Irene, Soren's daughter and Marcel, the mercenary leader, are excitedly discussing about what to do. I don't care what you think, Marcel. You'll get the job done and I, I can't accept that my father died in vain. Bullshit, the most important thing now is searching for supplies. Certainly not dealing with the stupid temple. I won't let a city girl tell me what to do. I'm the leader. It was my father who was in command, and now you'll honor your contract and finish the job. A teardrop falls from Iron Sheik and gets lost in the desert. I won't die for nothing, and I won't be wandering around the desert looking for some fucking temple. There are nomads everywhere, and we can't waste our time with some useless research. 
As I already said, nomads are fighting a civil war inside their own clan. And by the movement of those people, you can see who is talking. So now it's he who is talking. Previously, it was, of course, he and her. So, inside their own clan, they won't leave the finger against strangers like us until this struggle goes on. According to their tradition, they fight. The fir they first have to solve their inner conflicts, if I can just talk. Otherwise, their clan will get no benefit from our killing. The mercenary tone of voice starts getting provocative. Provo provocative. Yeah, okay, what do we do then? We show up to that huge group of savages and kindly ask for some food and water? Clearly, exasperated by Marcel's arrogance, Siren starts using a more irritated but determined tone of voice. <sighs> there won't be any large group. Most of the families of the clan will be spread among the desert. With the passing of time, they will be recruited by one of the pretenders, but will take care. They'll take several weeks, if not entire months. Nomads are ne really devoted to their rituals, especially when they're about to take power. The man is shocked by Saren's words and his aggressiveness seems quickly fading. But this means that we can attack a small group, steal their resources and also find something to carry keep. Maybe the guy is not going to die yet. The mercenary seems now more distracted as if he was thinking about what to do next. We don't need to we don't need to attack them. We can just talk to them or try to threaten them as our last resort. It's not necessary to start another fight. Myself. The man gets angry again here in Aaron's voice. You're stupid if you think they'll let us other let us other options, they'll kill us like they did with your father. The girl seems exploding in rage. Don't you dare talking about my father, son of a bitch. The mercenary seems pleased by Aaron's rage and starts pressing her. How the fuck are we supposed to talk with them? Not even the old man understands the language, that's why I won't let a little girl be in charge, you don't know what you're talking about. A smile appears for a moment on Irene's face and she answers back rudely. <laughs> you are the one who doesn't know what uh, he's talking about, as always. There's someone between us who has recruited... Was recruited expressly for Snowless. Her knowledge of the nomad's language. He turns to you and looks at you. Great, I was just wondering what he was here for. She? I'm a she. Now we know he's totally useless. I hope he can at least handle a sword this nomad's paw. No, I use a bow. Seren turns to you and starts talking with a high tone to catch everyone. And you know their culture, so what do you think? Cautious. We can't be sure of how they'll behave, especially the largest group. If we want to get what we want without risk, we should only deal with the smallest families. That's what I've been trying to say for more than an hour. I knew it, another pacifism obsessed Saharian. The man seems expressed by all these arguments. He gets close to the two and firmly says, Stop it! The man he then he addresses you and points out a place up north beyond the highest downs. There's an oasis not far from here, even if it's already taken by a group of nomads for sure. It's foolish to get close to an oasis, it will be guarded by an army. No, probably there will be just a few nomads. The oasis is a difficult place to defend and the nomads are able to manage their water supplies. Probably we'll find a little family still neutral. neutral. Yes, cautious. It's true, the Oasis will probably go be guarded by a neutral family, but that may allow the other factions to supply themselves with water, water to avoid troubles. We should pay attention to avoid running into other groups of nomads. Zeron, the man addresses you, ignoring the other two who keep arguing. I think the best thing is to decide once we arrive at the Oasis. Start gathering your stuff. I'll go check the nearby area so we'll know in advance how many nomads are to be expected. And if you can, talk with these two immature children, says the man looking to Irene and myself who are still arguing. The last thing we want is fighting against each other. Yes. Collaborative. Uh, I think this is the best thing to do now. 
Now you can talk to other survivors, click on the supplies when you're ready to prepare your stuff while waiting for Zeron. Alrighty, let us talk to other people. So Irene, about your father. So I like how this system works. I choose that I'm gonna be talking about the father and then I can choose what I'm gonna be saying. So worried. Irene, I'm sorry what happened to your father. How are you? Irene looks at you. She seems to smile, but soon you see the teardrops falling from her eyes. And when you look at her face again, you see her feature contracted in an expression of pure despair. despair. I'm not sure that talking about it will help me, says Irene, trying the tears in her face. Rational. We know our parents will pass away before us, but their passing is always hard to swallow. Talking about it can surely help you casting out those shadows that otherwise will become part of your being. I think that I'm gonna be just choosing one of the options. And uh, if you wanna try to prototype yourself, you can choose something else and see what kind of other options there will be. So I'm just gonna be trying to think what would be the thing or how she would react and then choose that option from there. Irene looks at you and starts talking, following a thread whose connections aren't immediate. However, it seems that she was only waiting for the right occasion to open up. I've always lived in the shade of my father, he was everything to me. It has been like that since my mother's death. You understand that Irene's speech is not improvised, but that she is expressing long dwelled upon thoughts. He had always been here for me, maybe even two months. Now that he's gone, I feel alone, lost and without reference points. Surely I got all the love I needed, but there was a price to pay. Irene starts crying again and her voice starts trembling. But this time she does nothing to stop her tears. His constant cares didn't leave me the space necessary to grow up. Now I'm 20, but I feel like being 10. I've got nothing to offer to humanity, I'm nothing but my father's shadow. I'm incompetent, I'm just a spoiled little girl who can stand on her own feet. My father was the only person who loved me, the only one who could really love me. A parent loves his sons, sons even if they aren't worth nothing. Irene seems to get more and more emotional, her voice is getting more and more difficult to comprehend and her tears are falling profusely. I've got nobody now. I've lost everything I had. I'm alone, all alone in the world. This despair seems to get the better of her and Irene starts crying her eyes out, groaning for the pre uh, for the babe. Yeah, let's hug her. Irene hugs you back and gives crying in your arms. After a while she leaves you and speaks to you with a trembling voice. Thanks for your sympathy. So... Uh, I think we are gonna be using the intuition, I have a lot of it anyways. Irene, an incompetent person incompetent person wouldn't have arrived so far. The fact that you have doubts about yourself proves that you're not a stupid. You're not a stupid because doubt is one of the main distinguishing features of wise people. Thanks. Irene seems to wait a moment to pull herself together. Let's talk about something else, please. So Marcel then. Uh, let's see, friendly. You really can't have any fondness for Marshall, don't you? I can't stand that man. Despite his stupidity, he's remarkably insolent. Intuition. He's a proud man. He's used to command, but we need him. Avoiding the constant attack can will be enough to prevent him from doing impulsive actions. He's dangerous, pitiless, an unpredictable man, and I don't want to have a carness on my conscience, even if we're speaking about nomads. Intuition. He won't ever be able to make it by himself. He'll be forced to submit to our own common will. What's important is to treat him decently, to leave his pride untouched, since he cares more about it than about his own life. Maybe you're right. I, I love it to make everyone notice how stupid he is, but that doesn't mean I'll accept all his stupid decisions. <laughs> yes, determined. I won't let him do anything stupid. He'll be forced to do what I say. Yep. I only hope this is the right thing to do. Nothing, I'll go. Yeah, so 
We talk everything that we could with her. 